Sage Fam, it's me, Erin James. Oh my god, hey, it's me, Mickey J. Theatre. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and where are we up to, Mickey? And Julia at, hey, hey, at the Stephen Sondheim Theatre, which is a little incongruous, but you know, excited about the show and excited yeah. about going to the Stephen Very Sondheim Theatre. We've it. been to the Sondheim Theatre in the UK, yeah. in London, but never the Stephen Sondheim. Yeah, so we're going to take off both. Look at the sign. So we've both seen Anne Juliet before. Yes. Quite a few times, actually. I, I, I haven't seen it for ages until like post pandemic and you then watched it quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it caught up to the hype, whereas you've seen it. I saw it pre West End in Manchester. Yeah. And I saw it on its West End opening night and we saw it on its like closing weeks. Yeah, we stood. We have been standing for this show. It's one of the few shows ever that we both stood for. Let's go and see what the Broadway production's like. And I finally get to see Mel the Barry. Yay. Because hopefully. hopefully. Because I got into the show later, so Mel had already left. Melanie the Barry's come to Broadway, so very, very, very excited. So, as I've seen Melanie LeBarry in loads of things like Matilda, the original West End production, and all these different things, so I'm so happy to see her on Broadway. So, here is the front, the marquee. It's a red brick. I think like it's just this in the Neil Simon Theatre that have this red brick style. Look at all the vases, the vases, vases, vases. And then the sign, this is Stephen Sondheim Theatre. If you come to the front, you can see Sondheim's signature, which is just there. This is a gorgeous theatre. I actually, I think this might be one of my favourite exteriors of a theatre because it's so different. It's very, very different to West End. And then there's a sign for the show and everything like that. Now we're going to go in queue. Mickey's just getting tickets. And then we're going to head in to the theatre. And now we're in the queue and they have these really cool boards on the way in. There is the cast. We're sat in orchestra C. Oh wow, we're up close. Yeah. Party time. Henry Miller's theatre. That's all about the theatre. And then there's Malabarry. UK, British performers on Broadway. We love to see it. I really do like this theatre. The more we're here, the more I'm like, oh. I'm just hoping the interior goes with the exterior. And here's a rundown of who's on. Oh, we have we have a cover Romeo and Anne on. Well, it's quite modern inside. I didn't expect this. And here is all the merch. Very similar to the Western. Nobody prepared me for this theatre to be so modern. I've really been thrown by this. So contemporary. And we found our seats, and it is identical to the London production. Cosmo more box here, but basically identical. And this building is so modern, so different. I really, I really like this theatre. It's grown up a mother. Look what we just found. We just found Jenna Russell and Daniel Evans when they were why? here. Do you know why? It's the name of Papa George. This is all of all the Sondheim shows that have ever been in this, this theatre. Theater? I think, because Sondheim on Sondheim definitely was. That's Cinema Sondheim on Sondheim. And there's Company. Company in 95. Yeah, there's Company in 95 and then there's one more. Into the Woods 2014, the, I think it was Chaos Theatre Revival, I think was the company name. Oh yes, I remember. The one that was like out to music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okie dokie, it's Mickey Joe here, coming to you in the intermission with the cocktail playlist. I like that, the cocktail playlist for Anne Juliet. There's some interesting things in some of these. So, first of all, we have the Shake the Ground, a thunderous punch to take you from zero to your own hero. That's a Hercules reference. You're a champion, let them hear you roar. That's Katy Perry. Vodka, ginger liqueur, lime, guava, mint and cane syrup. Then we have the Head in the Clouds, you shouldn't want it, but you do. One sip is sure to leave you a little bit breathless and with one less problem. Haha. -ha. That one has ginger. Gin, elderflower liqueur, lemon tonic, and cucumber syrup. That's the weird thing in that one. I am curious though. Then we have my fire, as in you are my fire. This drink called Spark a Deep Burning Desire, but there are medications that can clear that right up. Uh, because we made it just the way you want it. You know, that way. That has tequila, campari, lime, agave syrup, agave? Agave? I don't know. And smoked chili bitters. That feels like a lot for a matinee, I'll be honest. Then we have the, oops, uh, this not so innocent cocktail will play with your heart, but you'll still want to do it again. Multiple Britain references. That has Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey, blackberry, lime, and rosemary sweet tea. I am intrigued. And then finally, the Since You have Been Gone. This has frozen rosé, vodka, organic strawberry and peach syrup. And it says, now you can get what you want. Just one taste is like breathing for the first time. You may even fall for a 
stupid love song. I love it. Some content advisory here to be aware of. Flashing lights, strobe lights, loud sudden noises. Nothing too oppressive though, I will say, on the loud sudden noises front. More like music based, there's not gunshots or anything. And then water based haze or smoke, especially if you're sat in the front orchestra. That took me by surprise. I don't think I've ever sat quite so close for this show before. We also have this fun step and repeat towards orchestra left. Now I like these. I like a theatre that includes a photo spot and this one seems to have the space to do so. Not every Broadway and West End theatre does. This is cute. The next thing we need to prioritise if we're putting something like this in, think of the lighting people, because this is a great space. Horrible, horrible lighting, I will say. So we figured out what it was. Yeah, so the photos, and there were more on the other side, yeah. are all roundabout theatre company revivals and song time shows. This is a roundabout theatre, Yeah. but and Juliet isn't by roundabout, this is like a rent out, because sometimes, like kind of what happened when we went to the Helen Hayes, yeah. that show was not by second stage, but they'd rented it, so yeah. that's the same here with Anne Juliet. Because I saw a picture of Follies and I was like, that was at the Velasco, that was not here. Yeah, we're just kind of exploring until we have to go back in. Yeah. And here are all the covers. You have Britney on for Porsche Benvolio. That's the one that I hadn't really clocked earlier. We're like a moving board and it's very easy to find. And here is the merch. It's all very similar to the London production, so not much is different, which we like. It was great there. I like the player cards because obviously the ensemble are called the players. So that's fun to have those with the different costume designs. Hmm, I kind of like the cap. No food inside. There's nothing that loud too badly, to be honest. Just loud music, but there's no, there's no bangs, there's no gun shots, there's no any of that. It's very fun and dancey. We got the t-shirts. Ah, there's the dedication for the naming and who made it possible. And we got the t-shirts, that's Mickey's, and here's mine. Yeah, we got the good. This is the final state of the show. I'm really loving the fact that they're blown, literally. They're starting to try and get rid of all of this ready for the evening show. Love the final state. Everywhere. It is everywhere. There's two whole lots and it really does cover. I remember not this much no, I at do the Shaftesbury. Do Everything's bigger on Broadway. Yeah, we literally got covered. My pocket's full of confetti now. Hello. Oh my god, heck. We are obviously back in our flat, but we're going to talk about our trip to see Anne Juliet on Anne Broadway. Anne Juliet. I just, again, I keep doing this thing where I try and sing the name of the song in the style of the show, and I realise there's no song that says Anne Juliet and Anne Juliet, it's a jukebox musical. Is there a song that has Juliet in it? No. 
The songs that have dialogue in them that say Juliet. It's gonna be Juliet. Bow. What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being? What's wrong with being confident? Oh. oh! So this was our first time seeing Anne Juliet on Broadway. Yeah! But both of us had seen Anne Juliet before. So what differences did you pick up, Mickey? That's a very good question, Erin. There's a whole scene that's just gone. It's not a hugely important scene, but it's after Juliet. It's right before that song I just sang. And it's after Juliet goes and meets Francois for the first time. And he's playing uh, Say Hello to the Boy that I Am. Dum, 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 dum. And she goes and plays uh, along with him. And they normally get interrupted by his dad coming in mm -hmm. and bringing in a girl for him to dance with. And then Juliet's like, you can back off because I was here first. And then Francois is like, oh, that's not good. That whole bit is gone. Yeah. His dad just doesn't come into that scene anymore. And they just have new dialogue that transitions them from, I don't need nobody telling me I want to, I want to, what, what, what I want to do about my destiny into confident. So that whole bit is gone. It doesn't really, mm -hmm. like I said, it doesn't make much of a difference. No, it cuts character. That's Without Checking, it felt like the ensemble were bigger, but I always say that about Broadway shows versus West End. It just always feels like there's maybe two more people on stage. Yeah, I think with Broadway, it just naturally feels bigger because um, the set and everything were basically the same as the West End production. It's just yeah. slightly wider. More confetti? It was a lot more confetti. I think there I were think. more confetti points, but again, it's been a while since <laughs> although seeing I was, West End. Although I was sad that this stage, I think the the West End production came out more into. The oh, there was all that cool, had, like the rock work that kind of the came rock down. stuff on the front of the stage. Yeah, there was this one kind of proscenium. It was very like here is the proscenium. Everything is being beyond the proscenium. Yeah. But um, the experience of that theatre was very nice. Loved the Sondheim Theatre, the Stephen Sondheim Theatre. The Theater. Stephen Sondheim Theatre. Very, of, very pretty. Yeah, one of the most spacious sort of pre-auditorium spaces on Broadway. Yeah, there's you had a lot decent, of space. Decent uh, bathrooms um, and, yes, yeah, spacious multiple merch stands, nice bar area. Yeah, you could tell it was a newer, one of the newest theatres. Yeah by the space that you had outside. And then the auditorium was really modern. So it definitely stands out against the rest of Broadway. And it's, it stands out anyhow, because it's on the, the less populated side of Broadway. G Gutenberg calls it the weird side of, is it 7th Avenue or is it, yeah, or 6th, 7th? I think it's 7th. The weird so. side of 7th Avenue, yeah. Because like fewer Broadway theatres to yeah. the right hand side of Broadway, the street. But very easy to find because it is very close to Times Square. Very easy to find. Very easy to find. If you're curious about what I thought of the show, sort of in comparison to the UK version that we'd seen multiple times, mm -hmm. I have already done a review. Yes. Over on my channel because some of the performances were some of my favourites of those characters I've ever seen. Yes. You finally got to see Melanie LeBarry. Which like. It feels comforting to say that I've seen, now I've seen Melanie LeBarry as nurse, uh, as Angelique. I wish I could tell you, I'm sure there are differences between like <coughs> the Manchester version and then the West End version and then the Broadway version. It's little stuff. It's not had big substantial changes. A lot of stuff just hits different and feels different. Yeah, it definitely feels different It having just American accents. I liked Romeo more on Broadway as a character, not necessarily like because of the performance, but just because the way it was He's directed. Warmer, I think. He's when they lot... did One More Try, it felt like they were singing it for both of them, and it wasn't just like him still trying to win her back. Sorry, you're taking a text message during this. Something just binged. There we go. Sorry, something just I'm binged. sorry I'm not holding your attention. Um, when they sing One More Try together, it feels very much like they're just like two young people who both have a lot to live for and like, and it felt a lot more <clears throat> even and there was a bit more of like just a, a joy to yeah, that. Yeah, I think in the West End production, Romeo was seen just more as kind of vacuous. He's very maligned in the script. I've said this before, but that's not the point. Something that I find really interesting with this show, and there's not many other shows that I think you can have this fun, is with ensembles and figuring out tracks and yes. how they match up with the West End version because I was, and how when swingers go on, what tracks they're on because obviously every character has a player name. Which, but, which we like, we like an ensemble that has identities. And so it gets fun when the covers, when the swings also have player names mm -hmm. and then going, okay, they're on for this person. So that track is the same as this person in the West End. And we were trying to marry up where everybody was and if there had been changes from that. Who's the Kirstie Skivington? Who's the Grace Moat? <clears throat> exactly. And how the covers lined up and if it's like semi Lily Dunn. 
And it was interesting to then kind of learn that some of the ways the covers are completely different. In, yeah, it feels very thing. tailored to like individuals, like, oh, you're a performer who could do this part and this part and so, etc. It definitely feels like Anne Juliet's found a, a, like a strong home on Broadway. I like a lot of- really nice to see. I like a lot of what they're doing. I think the marquee design on the front could be cooler because it's Anne Juliet and it's big and it's bold and it's pink. It is not as cool as the Shaftesbury was. No, I think the Shaftesbury had that area to make it feel like, oh, this is like the fun camp, like, yeah. like great night out kind of vibes. I would like a bigger, brighter marquee, but I love <clears throat> the merchandise because they've got like revamped Broadway merchandise. It's very pink. I've got a cute tie-dye t-shirt that you saw. I like the drinks and the fact they do drinks descriptions. Those were cute. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a great time. It's one of the most fun shows you could see on Broadway right now. I yeah, think. I think if you're looking for kind of a fun night out on Broadway and maybe an easy Broadway show musical to watch, maybe you're not like the biggest musical theatre fan. Or maybe your friends or relatives aren't and you want to take them to something that's sort of more accessible to them. Any children of the 90s, this the is a music, great show for you. I think it's one of those where with a jukebox musical that there's so much music that somebody will feel... Yeah go, oh, I like this song. Yeah. And then that's kind of the whole yeah. way through. It's an interesting way to introduce somebody to the concept of Romeo and Juliet. It is. It is an interesting way to introduce someone to the concept of Romeo and Juliet. It's doing well. Like, it's doing quite well on Broadway. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be one of, like, the last few shows standing from this most recent season, basically, because yeah. we're seeing a lot announcing closings. And, and Juliet, touch wood, seems to... Well seems to still be going strong. Which is nice because I feel like the London production struggled to find its home because of the pandemic. It really impacted its momentum. I yeah. think in London. So hopefully the Broadway one goes on to en can enjoy continued success. And the UK is about to get a UK tour next it year. It is about show. to get a UK tour. So we'll see whether the, the UK tour production will be more aligned to the Broadway production, mm. which I'm gathering it will be, even though there's only small changes. Maybe, maybe. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And Mickey, what should they comment with? What do we want to know? Comment down below with where in the world you have seen Anne Juliet, because a bunch of different to, places. It went to Canada. It went to Canada. It's been in Australia. I think it might yes. still be in Australia. I think no, I think the Australian production may now have toured to even more exciting I've, places around that area. Has it gone to Singapore and then I think, coming back to Australia? It's only coming back to Australia. Something like that. Yeah, um, so comment with all that down below if you saw the London production, let us know. Have you booked your tickets to see the UK tour or are you heading to Broadway to see it soon? Yeah, and it's a show full of show-stopping numbers. What is your one favourite number in the show? If I had to pick one, it would be the mashup between uh, One Less Problem and Can't Feel My Face. It's probably my favourite. It's just because the choreo on the revolve, yeah. when it starts to writhe, it's so cool. It's that, and then probably second for me is Confident, I think. It's a good number. It's a good number, but then you also, a lot of people like Du Bois Band's back, and... Yeah, that is true. That's a lot of, there's a lot of big moments. Yeah. A lot of big moments. It's a very fun, show-stoppy show. Yeah. So, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we hope that you're having a magical and stagey rest of your day. <gasps> Bye! Bye.